March 2013. It includes the last two days of February, Wednesday, February 27th, Thursday the 28th, and the first three racing days of March. You can see them all bundled up today. Very chilly this week after being in the 80s for most of the winter. It's in the 40s today. It was an interesting week to say the least. On Monday as the week got started, I had to go to the doctor to do some pain in the leg and found out that I had a blood clot. That's not anything you like to hear. So I spent most of the week with a swollen leg and propped up most of the time. It didn't stop me from going to the races virtually and twice during the week actually on track. Wednesday, I had only two selections as I had several uh, scratches due to the inclement weather. In the fourth, I like number three, Manly, who was um, looking to make a strong effort today for Michael Maker, Joel Rosario, and the Ramsey clan. He went off at even money, and as they turn for home... As they come toward the top of the stretch, it's I Am American off the turn in front. Manly is now second on the outside, trying to close in. At the rail, Large Coffee is third. I Am American down to the 16th pole, Manly bearing down. I Am American, Manly, Manly goes by. I Am American fights on, though, and it's Manly by... Nice. Good way to start off Wednesday. But in my second and only other bet of the day... I disappointed as the 7-5 to five favorite. On Thursday, I decided to get out of the house and go out because my best bet of the day was in the third race, and then I had a bet in the fourth race. I thought I'd see the two races, make my later bets, and uh, then come home. So the first thing I did is I cashed my tickets from the previous weekend. Then I looked up at the scratch board. Who scratched? Yeah, the, the favorite, my horse, my best bet of the day. So I hung around for the next race where I had a minimum bet and Frolic's Revenge ran third, then I ran second, then I ran second again, and then in the last two races I ran a very close third and second, but what's notable about those races is that I had doubled the bet on both of them. The first one, a Todd Pletcher horse, was 9-2. to two. Had he held on, that would have been $55, and in the last race of the day, I liked the Chad Brown filly. She went off at 7 to 1 and was caught near the wire. That would have been $80. So I would have collected nearly $140, if not for a couple of yards and photo finishes. On Friday, I turned the page on a new month. I had had over 30% wins for the month of February, by the way. And the very first race that I had a selection in was the opener on Friday, March 1st. I like number 7, Kissing Gentlemen. First off the claim for Michael Maker. Ken and Sarah Ramsey, Joel Rosario, who's riding lights out today. And as they turn for home, he was loose on the lead. Yes, and gentlemen, and Joel Rosario running away a 16th out. And Joel Rosario eases up, kissing gentlemen, strolling home to victory. Oh, yeah, that's a good way to start the month. My picks in the second and the third both scratched, so my next bet was in the fourth, like Bernie the Maestro, again being sent out by Michael Maker, ridden by Joel Rosario for the Ramses. But Bernie the Maestro had been sprinting for as far back as you can see in his past performances, but he did have a 3 for 12 record going two turns. Today he was stretching out, he was loose on the lead, and as they turned for home, Bernie the Maestro's well clear here. Red Hill's trying to hold on for second. Playing a joke now moves up alongside of him, but Joel Rosario gets his third. Bernie the Maestro wins. From Much the best. Two for two. It's going to be a great month. Then in the fifth, I turned for home on the lead with Wrestler Hustler. And who came right, riding up the rail? Joel Rosario to nip, nip me at a price with my third selection. I was off the board in my next, and then in the Ninth race, it was my best bet of the day on Friday. I like number six so many ways. She had won the grade three Schuylerville at Saratoga and then the grade one Spinaway was making her long awaited return. In fact, Gulfstream had written a special stakes race for her and called it the Primal Force. Owner Maggie Moss had been on HRTV talking about how excited she was to have her come back to the track, even talked about the Kentucky Oaks. When the gate sprung open, she broke poorly and was behind the field. And I even wrote my analysis. Number eight, Fusiashi's wonderful. Quote, still, I hope I don't regret ignoring my own advice to never guess with a Pletcher filly. Yeah, won and paid over $6. Man, you just never know. Saturday, March the 2nd, was the big stakes day out in California. Big cap day. It's Saturday, March 2nd, Big Cat Day. 
In addition to the Grade 1 1 million dollar Santa Anita handicap at Santa Anita today, there's the Grade 1 Kilroe Mile. Here at Gulfstream we have the Grade 3 Swale Stakes at 7 furlongs for 3 year old Colts. And we also have the 9 furlongs on the turf. Here come the Bride Stakes for 3 year old Phillies. And in the opener here at Gulfstream, I like number one, Pistole. One for one. The great two top flight handicap. Summer Applause had been one of the top three year old fillies last year. She made her four year old debut in, uh, in Houston a month ago. Ryder lost the irons and she had no chance. Today she came back, she went off as the favorite. Tripled the bet. Then it was the Caesars Wish Stakes at Laurel. I didn't handicap Laurel, but I read an article on the Daily Racing Forum that an unbeaten filly walk with a purpose. It's going for a four straight and just looked tons the best. It sounded like a free bingo square to me. And as they turned for home, then an aqueduct. It's a grade three Tom Fool handicap, their second graded stakes race. And I thought it was really interesting when I checked the past performances and Comet to the Top, who had been my pick in last Saturday's Grade 2 San Carlos, going seven furlongs at Santa Anita, had shipped across the country with just seven days rest to take a shot here at the Tom Fool. Had an inside draw, and I thought he looked like the speed of the race. Joel Rosario up from Gulfstream was in to ride. And it was a dogfight through the stretch. At the top of the stretch, after half and 46 and 1, it's coming to the top and Ed Hardhoof. And on the outside, it's Saturday's Charm gaining ground. Consortium looks to move through down at the rail. Here's Saturday's Charm now to take the lead. Head hard hoof continues to battle on. Comma to the top, then consortium. They come for the wire, and it's going to be tight. And it's a photo finish between Saturday's Charm and Comma to the top. But he had a heart of a millionaire, 10 to win. That was nice. Got back over $30, my sixth win of the day. Woo then it's Santa Anita was the grade one Las Virginis. I like number five, Beholder, had disappointed at odds on at her return as a three-year-old going seven furlongs. But today, I thought she looked tons the best. She'd been working lights out. And as they hit the far turn, she was in control. The rail and goes on, still running strongly on the lead. Has it by three. Fifty shades of hay speeding through the city on the outside. Air Kitty are all chasing. Beholder now digs deep, finds more, still leads by four big lengths. And it's a scintillating performance from Beholder today. Just totally outclassed the opposition. Oh, yeah. 20 to win. Prime time on Beholder. Nearly $40. That was awesome. The 10th at Santa Anita is my bet of the day. It's the grade one Santa Anita handicap. I like number nine, Game On Dude. Looks to be the controlling speed. Both Bob Baffert and Mike Smith have said he's never doing better. They both said there won't be any rating today. We're going right to the front. We dare anyone to try and come and catch him. Coming to the quarter pole and Game On Dude has not taken a deep breath yet. It is Game On Dude. Mike Smith just pointing him in the right direction. Homeward bound in the big cap. Game on dude is now turning it into a procession. Big run from Clubhouse riding second, Ron the Greek third. But just absorb this one. This is a moment of history. Game on dude. Perhaps the easiest winner in history of the big cap. Game on dude and Mike Smith cantering. 50. It. 50. 50 to win on Game on dude. Woohoo! On Sunday, March the 3rd, I was looking to continue my good winning from Saturday. And in the very first bet, I tripled the bet because it was a first off the claim for Team Calabrese. Went off at 3 to 5, third. In the sixth race, I went with multiple stakes winner, summer front. Even the analysts on HRTV just said he just looks like much the best horse. One of the rare poor rides in the meet, Joel Rosario, took him inside, nowhere to run, trapped, blocked, checked finished third. Then I was seventh with Dancing for Glory who looked to be just tons the best on paper. 
And then I finally won my last race of the week in the ninth. It was made in special for three-year-olds, and I liked Antipathy, who had run second to Majestic River, who had come back to set the pace when losing to Emollient, who I think is Kentucky Oaksbound. So I tripled the bet on number eight, Antipathy. She was dueling through the turn. Coming toward the top of the stretch. Antipathy is the leader. Minx to the outside. They went three quarters in 111 and three. They're into the stretch. Antipathy and Minx, and they're well clear of their competition. Antipathy on the inside. Minx trying her best, but can't go with Antipathy. Antipathy edging away from Minx, and it's a long way back to the others. Minx keeps battling outside of Antipathy, but Antipathy will okay. score. Okay, for thirty dollars. The feature on Sunday was the Grade Three Palm Beach for three-year-olds, and to be quite honest, I didn't like Number Nine Charming Kitten. Even though he was being sent out by Todd Pletcher, and even though he'd won the prep for this, I just wasn't that impressed with it. But I couldn't find anybody else that I wanted to back. And then there's the whole Pletcher thing. I'd already missed once this week by letting a Pletcher horse go, so I supported him, second best to my second choice. And then I ran fourth in the last race of the weekend. The week was capped off with a pretty exciting event for me. We had a Florida Panthers game Sunday evening at 6, and I had gotten a phone call earlier that said I needed to be out in the uh, entryway to our section because I was going to be honored as the season seat owner of the game. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And now we look forward to this week. Keith is coming down on Wednesday. Uh, he and I will head out to the track on Saturday. That'll be fun. And it'll be Tampa Bay Derby Day. So a lot of simulcast action as well as the stakes action from Gulfstream Park.